Greetings, Earthlings. Today, uh, I thought we'd take a look at this old fluke multimeter that's been in my garage for some years. In fact, uh, well, here's the battery I took out of it. So that says, uh, uh, 2009, used by 2009. So it's been sitting for at least 10 years. Um, we'll see how it's held up in that time. Um, there it is. This is uh, an 8050A. It's a four and a half digit handheld multimeter, which was pretty cool in its day. Uh, I bought this brand new uh, from Quement Electronics in San Jose, uh, probably 1984. Um, and it is suffering from the sort of standard ailments that these old Fluke 8050As tend to suffer from, which is the uh, LCD display is a little flaky. Um, and then there are uh, common problems, internal, uh, the electrolytic capacitors inside, which obviously I haven't looked at. This thing has never been calibrated, okay? Uh, never ever. So um, it's, uh, uh, we'll just see how accurate it is after all this time. I've got back here the uh, Tektronics DM4020, DMM4020, which we'll use as a reference. That's actually also a Fluke. Um, I forget the equivalent Fluke model number, but uh, it's the same company. Uh, I've got a voltage source and I've got a current source over there. And I've got some resistors. So here's my uh, 10K ohm 0.1% resistor. And we'll see what the Tektronics meter thinks of that. Right. Clip that on there. Okay. We don't need that. 9.999 something K ohms. That's pretty close. Okay. Let's see what the fluke uh, thinks here. I'll need to be on the uh, 20K range. Yeah, I'm there. And measuring ohms. Okay. So selection. Oh, well, I can go over some of the specs on this. Um, 200 millivolt, 200 microamp, 200 ohm. That's the minimum range. Up to 2 amps full scale. Uh, 1,000 volts DC. And I think it'll actually go to 200 meg ohms. Um, whoa, <laughs> that's spot on, 10.000 K ohms. That's pretty good. Oops, well, so that was 10 to the fourth. Let's try a one meg. Now these are only 1%, ah, oh, gee. But we'll see. We'll see what these things think of them. And uh, 0.9989 mega ohms, yeah. Okay, 0.999 mega ohms, yeah. That's one mega ohm. This has never been calibrated either, by the way. I, I, sh I should point out it's only a few years old, so it should be pretty close to still in spec. Okay, what does the fluke think? Well, it thinks it's uh, out of range. There we go. And we've got 0 0.9993, 0 0.9992. That's pretty close, okay. So that was 10 to the sixth. We did 10 to the fourth, 10 to the sixth. We should do 10 to the second. Go down to the low range. Well, no more of these wimpy resistors. There's a 100 ohm resistor, okay. This one, um, this is ancient, and it needs an oil change, but I got it off of eBay. That's a 100 ohm Leeds and Northrop uh, resistance standard. At one time, it was probably very close. Now it reads, uh, I'm just gonna 
exactly. Oh, wait. If we're going to be on the low range, I'm going to do something here. I am going to set the range. Okay. Uh, to what should be the 200 ohm range here. And I am going to short these leads together. Measure the resistance there and we'll use the relative. Where's the relative button? Right there. We'll zero that out. Okay. Now we'll see how close this is. It has drifted over over the years. This is probably dates to um, oh 1960s. I, I'm guessing early 1960s. It was property of Philco Ford SRS division. Uh, s satellite and Reentry Systems or something like that was SRS. Okay. And we get, uh, whoops, we get nothing because the clip fell off. Okay. Trust me, you'll like this. Okay. <laughs> um, I think there's a, the, the B versions, which are, which are the newer ones. I, this doesn't have a, an actual part number, but I think uh, it's a, like a 4030. Um, but the 4030Bs are like 0.001%. This is not quite in the same class, I don't think. Okay, let's do this. Stupid alligator clips. Okay, 99.932. Of course, I should... Wait a minute. I, uh, I zeroed it with the clips. Yeah, so let me turn that off. Let me re-zero re it here. Okay. Now I'll try it. All right, 99.937. That's uh, point, point one percent. I can consider this a 0.1% resistor, I guess, still. Okay. Well, and then we don't know how accurate this is. Okay, I'm going to try the, the clips. On. Oh, well, this one has the same deal. Okay. We have relative, so that says 0 0.11. We'll zero that out. I'm going to try the clips. Ta-da. All right. It's bouncing around a little bit. 100. Hmm. Cinch those down. I don't know. If those are moving on us or what? 100.24. Okay, 100.27. 100. Pretty darn close. Okay. And that's for something, again, which has been, this has been sitting for over 10 years in the garage, unconditioned space. Let's do some voltage readings, okay? We've got our... Uh, Voltage source over here. Go to, whoops. We'll go to DC volts. And I'll turn that on. Ignore the meter on the thing because it, it's a little wacky. Okay. So it's about one volt there. 1.00427. Okay. And we're on the, whoops, 2 volt range. With this. And let's see what it says. 1.0039. Okay, pretty darn close. Oh, well, we got some lights flickering. Okay. Let me crank up the... Uh, Voltage here to uh, let's go to about well, let's go down. Uh, two point 
200 millivolts. So, one, oops, okay. It should be about 190 millivolts. Switch it back on. I said switch it back on. There we go. Yeah. Okay, 190 millivolts ish. And the fluke. 190.73. Shh. That is. I've got a bad. Uh, I've got a bad outlet here. On one of my lights. Um, try to oh. Okay, I have multiple bad outlets. Okay, uh, 190 millivolts. Pretty darn good. Uh, so let's go up to, uh, let's see. Well, let's go up into the 20 volt range and say 19 volts. Whoops. That says 19.19. Can we believe it? No. All right, I've got 19.113 here. And yeah, 19.113. <laughs> <laughs> we are in agreement. OK. Uh, that only goes to 30 volts, so that's as, so that's as high as I'm going to go on the voltage. Tests, okay, but uh, so far I'm quite impressed. Let's do some current measurements. Okay, so I have this uh, current source that I built over here. And, uh, oh well, uh, so I'll, I'll back up here and talk about the LCD display. Uh, uh, there's an 8050 that Fluke makes, 8050A, which is a bench top, four and a half digit. Sort of this one's, Big brother, except this one does continu this one does continuity, which um, which Let's see which the uh, eighty fifty doesn't do, um, but uh, uh, there are numerous websites out there where people have replaced the LCD display on the eighty fifty with uh, an LED display. This is battery powered. As we saw, it runs off a nine volt battery. So replacing the LCD with LED could be problematic because LEDs tend to want more current. However, I did see one reference to somebody who used some high efficiency green LEDs, claiming that at 20 microamps, he could run them and uh, get a reasonable display. Unfortunately, he didn't show his show schematics or anything. But here I have some high efficiency green LEDs. Uh, these are 21,000 MCD brightness. Uh, da -da -da -da. Rated for word current is 20 milliamps. But let's try them on 20 microamps and see. Well, we'll try one. We'll try one at 20 milliamps and see if it lights up, okay? We'll flip that. Well, I can see it. I don't know. You can see that that's on there. No, it's not on now. Oh, there it is, okay. So, it might be possible to do that. But is that 20, whoops, but is that 20 microamps really accurate? I don't know. I never trusted this thing since I built it. 
it does some weird things. So let's ask our multimeters. Here we go, going to there. Current DC, DCI. And we'll flip that. 21.6 microamps. Well, that's pretty close. I could get it to, I could get it spot on to 20 if I wanted to. Or pretty darn close anyway, I think. Eh, but I won't, I'll leave it there. Uh, 21.69, it's bouncing, it's bouncing. 21.7, okay, 21.7. Let's see what the uh, what the fluke does with it. A 200 microamp scale. Uh, oh yes, of course. Amps. Okay. Oops. 21.9. Okay. That's pretty darn close. Um, let's bump it up. Well, I want to be two milliamps. If I go to the second range, that's about two milliamps. 1.95. 1.96, it's, it's creeping up here. That's weird. All right, just under, just under two milliamps. What does the... Uh, Tektronics think. Yeah. <laughs> 1968, so just under two milliamps. Um, <laughs> that, I have to say, that's pretty impressive for something, as I said, that's been relegated to garage duty because the, uh, the LCD display was starting to flake out. And there are some faint segments on here. Um, so I don't think I need to calibrate it. Uh, the displays are just not, not uh, obtainable. Um, so it's a matter of living with it as it is. It may be possible to go in and clean up the contacts a little bit where the uh, uh, LCD, uh, you know, gets its, gets its, uh, signals from the uh, PC board. There's a, there's a flexible interconnect that uh, apparently oxidizes and you can go in and clean it or actually some people have just gone and, and soldered wires in its place. Uh, that's one possibility. Um, another one is to think about uh, doing an L LED replacement. Of course you can't get, at least that I'm aware of, uh, off the shelf seven segment displays that are, you know, this bright, this efficient. So it, it has to be done with individual ones. And the, the one website I saw where the guy did it, he used uh, surface mount LEDs and then with a, with a mask that he milled. Uh, so that's another possibility. But anyway, something built in 1980 four-ish, uh, this thing is uh, still <laughs> impressively in good shape.